Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today we've got the pleasure of watching Like Pike playing in their Tier 8 American non turreted tank destroyer. It is the rather slow but fearsome T 28. But today the gameplay from Like Pike is not really going to be the focus, and that's because Wargaming have just announced that there's an upcoming Tier 8 premium tank destroyer that's currently on the super test. Now, obviously, as this vehicle is on the super test, everything is subject to change. But the reason why I'm featuring the T-28 is because the TS-5 is basically looking like it's a premium version of the T-28. I'm going to be running down all of the preliminary statistics. Again, everything's subject to change here. But you can see that yeah, it pretty much looks like a T-28, right? It kind of feels like the front of the vehicle is a little bit more rounded. And as we can see, the rear of the tank has this kind of upper part here where there's a difference between the engine jet deck and then, I guess, the, the, the superstructure that you would be seeing more like on the on the T25 and that's something that you don't see on the back of the T28. However, statistically, this vehicle appears very similar. So I've written down all of the statistics of the upcoming TS5 and also the T28. And remember, this is a is as if everything stays the same. So both tier 8 vehicles, the same number of hit points, 1,500. Now for a tank destroyer, that's great. This thing has a good old slam of hit points because it's designed to, to take punishment. It's a heavily armoured tier 8 tank destroyer and it also needs the hit points to go with it for when the shells just go through the side or to weather the storm to kill that one tank in front of you to then turn it to be able to engage the next one. The TS-5 has just 6mm more frontal hull armor, 1mm less on the side and 0.8 on the rear, hardly any differences there. The engine power is practically the same, although the TS-5 will be a little bit slower than the standard T-28. It's also going to have a little bit worse gun traverse, but that doesn't really make too much difference. And the track traverse, the view range is going to be identical, and the speed limit seems to be just a little bit better than the T-28. 4km an hour faster forwards and 2km an hour faster going backwards. Now that could actually be really, really nice for the vehicle. One of the worst things about the T-28 is just you're so slow trundling into position. But more importantly, when you need to reverse to be able to get away from your opponents, then going from 10 to 12 could be absolutely fantastic. Think of it the, the difference between trying to engage something that goes backwards at 12 kilometers an hour, some of the tank destroyers, or the mouse. And the mouse, bizarrely enough, can go backwards at 15. It's actually quite hard to flank a mouse if you need to try and get around it and it just has a clear way to reverse. All right, so the gun on the upcoming TS-5, nearly forgot the name there, a bit of a weird name, very forgettable, seems to be pretty much identical to the 120mm that you would be getting on the T-28. 400 Alpha on its standard rounds and its premium rounds, which look to be APCR because the penetration is 300 and the penetration on the AP and the HE rounds are identical between these two vehicles. Funnily enough, the APCR rounds have just got three extra millimeters of penetration, but not really something to, to even look at there. Now, the TS-5 has worse accuracy at 0.44 compared to the 0.38 of the T-28, which suggests that it's going to be far worse for just sitting at the back and providing a line of fire. However, its aim time is better, 0.3 seconds better to be exact, and it also fires half a round extra per minute. So all in all, it's pretty much looking like it's going to be a better brawling vehicle. The probably is going to be a little bit worse at longer range purely because of the accuracy. But then again, would you be willing to give out 0 0.06 accuracy to fire a half a round extra minute? I probably would. And of course, as the vehicle is a premium, yeah, you're going to make some credits and you're going to be able to do some crew training. And apparently the, the, the crew are identical to that of the T-28. So if you've got four crew members you want to train up, you're going to be able to do that as well. And so all in all, I, I don't know really what to think. The, the vehicle just looks pretty much the same as a T-28. So that's why I usually hold a black screen. Okay, we're fixed. That's why I, I try not to usually make these kinds of videos where I, I, I show a tank that's similar to an upcoming vehicle because you're yeah, I, I just see it as kind of trying to present it as gameplay when it's it's really not. But considering that the upcoming tank is going to be just so similar to this, then this is really going to give you an idea of what the upcoming premium will be like if, of course, the statistics stay the same. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed about it, to be honest with you, because I always see new introductions of premiums as a way to kind of give us some new gameplay. Now, of course, there's one thing that I'm not dis disappointed about, and that is that this isn't just another German or Soviet premium tank. It's really nice that we're going to be getting our first tier 8 premium American tank destroyer. Currently, if you want to make credits, your only option is to play the Scorpion. And if you manage to complete all of the personal missions for Season 1 and you go all the way to the second uh, set of 
first personal missions, first campaign of personal missions, you can unlock the T-28 HTC, which is a great tier 7 vehicle, I guess for training up crews, but it's definitely not going to make you any credits. So it's looking like the, the upcoming premium will be a good option for that. But I, I, I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed that Wargaming have been a little bit safe in my opinion. They seem to be just not changing the statistics really at all, and it's practically going to be the same vehicle, just a premium version of it. Now, I'd rather that was going to happen than they introduce some completely crazy overpowered vehicle. And it's looking like the, the tank wouldn't be overpowered because if it was overpowered, then surely the T-28 is overpowered. And as long as the standard tank's like that, doesn't really matter if a premium tank's like that. But I, I still feel a bit disappointed because Wargaming might be able to create something more novel. Maybe they could make it a little bit more slow, but give it a better gun. Or they could increase the alpha damage of it to make it kind of a halfway house between a T-28 and a T-95. And I'm not suggesting with regards to the power of the vehicle. I'm simply suggesting that maybe it could have had like a, a 600 alpha damage gun, but a terrible rate of fire. Kind of like a, a training vehicle from the T-28 up to the T-95. And then make all of the other statistics worse than that of the T-28 to be able to balance it out. Alternatively, they could have just made it uh, have the 120mm gun, but just given it all round better armor, but make it slower, make it like the tank, you know, the, the frontal vehicle that you want to play. Still give it some weak points on top, so if you don't move the vehicle, that it's going to be vulnerable to standard ammunition, so you don't have to load the gold constantly to be able to go through the front of it, but just make something a little bit more novel and entertaining to play. I, it feels a bit lazy to just introduce a vehicle that, but to all intents and purposes, is identical, and I, I, I think that you've got a lot of clever designers wargaming you could easily tweak the stats here and there or give it some kind of a novel feature and it feels a little bit disappointing after we've seen vehicles like the soviet scorpion go into the game or the revamping of the is3a to be some kind of have a new auto reloading mechanic for then one of the first tier 8 should we say non-german and, and non-Soviet vehicles at premium to go into the game recently that quite a few people, but maybe the more the hipsters would be interested in. It's just going to be the same kind of thing. It doesn't really provide any new gameplay or, or introduce any new opportunities. So, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below whether you think it's, it's better that Wargaming are literally putting in a vehicle that to all intents and purposes is practically identical to a standard vehicle that we have in the game already, albeit with just a little bit worse accuracy for a little bit better rate of fire, or whether you think that Wargaming are kind of missing an opportunity to, to tweak things to be able to provide a more novel experience. Would you buy the uh, the the new premium tank in its in in the form that Wargaming are presenting? And once again, I want to clarify that this is on the super test at the moment. Not even I get to test the vehicle on on the live server. Although, really, what what's it going to show? Right? If I can have a good game in that, I can have a good game. I can have just as good of a game in the T28. Or do you think that you're going to be a little bit disappointed from that? And you would have you would have preferred for Wargaming to maybe branch out a little bit. And if you have got ideas, all of you wonderful little budding tank developers out there who have got cool those cool ideas of what you would specifically do to the vehicle what would you do what how would you change the upcoming ts5 to be maybe more novel do you think you could make the t28 more exciting without necessarily making it just flat out overpowered all right so like pike in a tricky situation here against an isu 152 on the enemy team a tier 8 soviet tank destroyer and a 40 tp he's played this beautifully he's managed to get up on top of the hill and force his opponents to come at him one by one but a low roll means that this is going to be an important shot but the isu 152 derps the shell into the tracks that's what's lovely about these tanks they've got all the armor they need is he going to be able to repair his tracks in time he does just in time if he hadn't repaired his tracks in time there the isu would have most likely rammed the tracks and believe it or not well it might be news to some of you that if you ram the tracks on a tank you can actually keep them locked off and a nice shot into the lower plate of the 40 tp at the end of the game there secures a seventh kill 4500 damage and 5500 blocked and so if we are going to be seeing armor anything like that of the upcoming ts5 and of course it has practically the same armor of the vehicle unless wargaming do something bizarre about it yeah if, if you've ever wanted a, a super heavily armored premium tank destroyer then one seems to be coming up and so like pike smashes an ace tanker here a cool headed medal for ricochet saying 10 rounds in a row and that's rather tricky to do against large 
caliber guns, a steel wall medal for blocking over three times, nearly four times the hit points of his vehicle in damage, and a high caliber for doing three times what anyone on his team and double what anyone on the enemy team was able to achieve. And as I didn't see like Pike fire many, if any, premium rounds, he makes a very tasty profit with or without a premium count. And that's something that you're going to be able to amplify with the upcoming TS5. And so the TS5 currently on the super test, looking like it, it could at least be fairly interesting from the perspective of being the first ever premium American tank destroyer. Bizarre that the game's been out for so long and we've had American tank destroyers in it pretty much since the beginning. And so to have one now definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Well, what's up next? I guess we need a Czechoslovakian tier 8 premium medium tank and we'll be starting to get towards a full set of vehicles. So definitely a thumbs up from that perspective, but Wargaming, I really think you're being lazy with the statistics of this vehicle. I think you're really missing an opportunity to make this novel do something so that it provides a different kind of gameplay and isn't just a vehicle that allows you to make crew training and make a, a load of credits as well. There's so many opportunities that you can do with a super heavily armored tank destroyer. But once again, it's early days yet, everything is subject to change and this is some very early prelim preliminary stats for the vehicle. Anyway, that's it for today, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.